Hello, everyone, and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy, Ivorian Spice, back at it again with day two of WrestleMania 38. Guys, whew, what a night it was for wrestling. Yes, for those who are new to the channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and also remember to share because sharing Ivorian Spice is caring. And if you want to contribute to the channel, you can always contribute via the link description where you click the link description and you can contribute via PayPal or catch me on a live stream, a live watch along, a live podcast and send in your super chat to help improve the quality content of this channel. Guys, let's get straight into business because WrestleMania 38 day two has happened and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it because it was a stupendous night. Two days. Day one was good. Day two was even better because the best fights, the best matches were on day two. The, the, world, the fight that I was waiting for, the big one, the undisputed title that was on the line, you know, title versus title, you know, the unification. And let's see tomorrow at Roy whether it will continue to be a unification or it goes back to just, you know, SmackDown title, I mean, Raw and um, um, Universal title and WWE champion. But let's go straight into the first fight, which was Triple H, which wasn't a fight, starting off WrestleMania with him coming on to address all the fans, his daughter, his family, to just eventually, you know, drop his boots as Triple H himself has retired. Big up to the game, brought me back memories. I remember when I was taking showers and baths, I would put water in my mouth and go, spit that spit like it was the game you know like i was triple h you know time to play the game and after that the first game sorry the first match was rk bro versus street profit versus alpha academy a very good triple threat match with the tag team titles on the line the raw tag team titles were on the line rk bro picking up the w with the with the back-to-back -back rko's Whew, beautiful RKO's that for Mon on Montel Ford's Montel Ford's unable to just you know recuperate, getting pinned one, two, three, which means that of course um, Riddle and Randy Orton are still tag team champions, and I'm happy with that in terms of the fight. It was a good opener to start off WrestleMania to warm it up. Eventually, the big guys came on, almost Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley has just recently come back from his concussion that he suffered in an emulation chamber, which made him lose the WWE universe. I mean, the WWE title. Sorry, I keep mixing up Universals with Roman Reigns, but the WWE Championship title he ended up losing it to Brock Lesnar. But again, this was a battle of the giants. In this case, I will probably will call it David versus Goliath. Goliath being Omos and David being Bobby Lashley. Even though Bobby Lashley is mighty. The almighty, muscular, big and strong. He looked like the the, the 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 small guy in this situation. Bobby Lashley, quick fight, of course. I didn't expect this fight to go that long. But it was entertaining, you know? Bobby Lashley started off with getting beat down by Omos. Then the tide turned around. Bobby Lashley eventually won the fight with the spear. Ending Omos with a 1-2-3 pinfall. Quick, quick match, but it is what it is. They had to get things out of the way. This this match was made like about what two weeks ago. So yeah. Another fight as well. Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. Again, I said it before. Every year there must be a celebrity that comes on WrestleMania to have a fight. Yeah, again, Logan Paul was yesterday. Bad Bunny had his time as well, twice in WWE. And on top of that, Ronda Rousey showed herself in WrestleMania. And then from there, she picked up a career. But with that, Johnny Knoxville, Johnny Knoxville did everything that he could, you know. He got all his mandem, all the gangs from, of course, Jackass to come and help him. They, as well, bought a few tricks off their sleeves, you know. Um, you had um, Johnny Knoxville with his, what you call it, trick gadgets, where he ended up using a big, gigantic mouse trap to trap... Sami Zayn, because Sami Zayn eventually is technically a, a mouse, a rat, whatever he is. He's a pest. He's a pest. He's been pestering us fans for a very long time, saying, that, oh, he's been done run, He's been screwed. There's been a conspiracy. Well, your conspiracy got trapped by a mouse trap, a gigantic mouse trap for you to get pinned by a non-professional wrestler, Johnny Notfield, an actor. 
a stuntman. Sami Zayn won't be showing his face on Monday Night Raw. I've got to tell you that. I'm honestly speaking, honestly speaking. The next fight, my woman, my beloved woman, Sasha Banks, Naomi, whew, versus Leo, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, and also Natalia, Shayna Baszler, and Queen Zelina and Camilla in a fatal four-way tag team for the WWE Women's tag, tag Team title. Of course, as you know it, the faces, the boss, the amazing, the glowing, Sasha and also Naomi ended up winning that match. That match was okay. Eventually. It got better as it got, got on. I thought for a hot sec, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan would win this game, but it didn't turn out to be like that. But for Sasha Bank and Naomi to win their first tower, because they go a long way. Their story goes a long way. They go from Team Bad, you know. Oof, and I used to love Team Bad. They were beautiful and dangerous. They were with Tamina there as well. And as you know, Tamina has said yes to my man. So, like, Tamina, I don't know if it's real or not real, but I'm happy that you found some love. Because Tamina needs love as well. Tamina needs a title as well, you know. She's been deprived. She's been deprived in WWE. She's been a side woman for a very long time while her friends go along and get titles and win titles. But I'm happy for Sasha Banks and Naomi. Next fight was, of course, of course, AJ Styles versus Edge. And this is the new Edge, new and improved Edge. This Edge, for some reason, has gotten even darker than the previous Edge that I've ever seen. Edge... I always loved it when Edge was a heel, guys. You guys let me know what your thoughts are. I loved it when Edge was a heel. But for Edge to fight AJ Styles, it was it was a brilliant match. It was a wonderful match. But Ed ended up winning with Damian Priest coming out of nowhere and distracting AJ. He didn't do anything to AJ. He didn't, he didn't touch him, but he looked at him. And from there, I stood there thinking, hey, Damian Priest has definitely gone full heel. The attire has changed, and you know, guys, when the character turns heel, they start wearing darker clothes, you know? They look like bad boys for some reason. Their makeup, if they were wearing makeup, they start wearing dark eyeshadows and etc. Edge won that due to, due to the distraction of Damien Priest. And then when when he when he got pinned, AJ Styles got pinned one, two, three. I tend to notice that Damien Priest came into the ring, and it looks like Damien Priest and Edge are now friends. They're now on this dark path. You know, they both love having that cross. Damien Priest with that cross running around with the cross, you know. I don't know. Like, Edge has always been like that for some reason. He has a dark path. He, he has a dark ultra ego. But big up to Edge for winning. AJ Styles, a lucky, my friend. Another fight that took place was Rich Holland and, and Shameless versus The New Day. You know that Big E caught that injury on his neck. Um, Big E, I hope you get back better, stronger, because we need you back in the WWE. Big up to Big E as well. But, of course, with that situation, with Rich Holland winning, of course, it was unfortunate because um, another distraction, another distraction. Again, distraction, distraction seems to be the thing in this WrestleMania. With, um, sorry, with Woods and being distracted with Sheamus all of a sudden coming out of nowhere, giving him the big boot. Ended, ended Woods with a one, two, three. Rich, Rich pins Woods as well with the one, two, three. Aston Reed versus Pat McAfee was an interesting one. Because why? Because I love seeing a commentator come on and being given the opportunity to wrestle. And he lived his dream. Like I've always wanted to live my dream of having a fight in WrestleMania. But I ain't brave enough to do that. So I won't be doing that. I don't want to catch any injuries. You know, I'm one of the guys that will tell you, oh, you think wrestling is real? I mean, you, oh, you think wrestling is fake? All right, then come, come, let me do a body slam on you and see if you don't get injured. You know, if you don't get any bruises, you know, it ain't easy. You know, that's why I commend these wrestlers, you know, it ain't fake. It's just real. It's just that they reduce the impact. But shit, nah, there's no way of faking a stunt. Mm -mm, you can't fake stunts. But yeah, with that fight there, the reason why, because Pat McAfee did beat Austin Reed, but it's what had took place afterwards. You thought Stone Cold Steve Austin yesterday in day one was the last time you saw him in WWE wrestling? No, he came back as soon as, as, soon as Pat McAfee beat up Austin Reed. 
This meant man challenged Pat McAfee and they ambushed him. They ambushed him and the referee was constrained. He was tied up. You know how Vince is. If Vince is in the ring, anything goes. The things that he does, anything goes. If you do something that's illegal, you're getting disqualified. And the referee are too scared because they will lose their jobs. Pat McAfee was ambushed by um, Austin Reed, you know, a town, you know, downtown for some reason. That's what he calls himself, you know, with um, a Mr. McMahon. Mr. McMahon winning that match. Then Stone Cold Steve Austin came out. All you hear was, dun, 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 dun. I got excited. The whole fans got excited. The whole stadium was a rock. We was like, oh, if only we can hear. If you smell what the rock is cooking. So they came both. So, so Stokon himself, of course, when he came out, stunned Austin Reed for Austin Reed to get out his, his ass out and then tricked. Because I knew it. I knew it was coming. He tricked Vince McMahon to having one last drink with him. And I know whenever you have a drink of Bud with So Cold Steve Austin, you may not end up finishing that because you might be knocked out unconscious with a stunner. And So Cold did that exact thing. Stunned Vince McMahon, asked Pat McAfee to come up there to have a drink with him as well. And Pat McAfee was living his dream, you know, having a cold Bud with So Cold like we all want to. But I don't want that because I know I will get stunned. You know, I will get a Stone Cold stunner. For no damn reason, just for just for having a drink with Stone Cold. Yes. So Pat McAfee got stunned. And then from there came the biggest match of them all. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reign. At that moment, I was thinking, wait a minute, we're well beyond four hours now. Don't tell me we're gonna have one of those matches where, of course, I've always had this feeling that um Brock Lesnar is on a time constraint on his contract that he probably gets paid per, per minute, like a thousand pound per minute, you know, a thousand dollars per minute. That's how it feels like because the match itself only lasted about 20 minutes or so, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the F5, the spears, the Superman punches, you know, suplex cities. Everyone was doing their finishing moves. Repeat after repeat after repeat. It got to the point. Even the advocate, Paul Heyman, was telling Roman to get up. There was a moment where Roman popped his shoulders. He popped it back in. But advocate was telling him to get up. You lived your life for this. You know, your family's counting on this. And Roman did. Eventually did it. He did it. And I was so damn happy, which made Roman reign the, mo the undisputed WWE champion of the world. And that's my guy. Roman is going to reign for a very long time. Well, guys. This has been your WWE WrestleMania 38 reaction from your boy, Ivor and Spice. I want to know what you thought of this event, day two. Was it better than day one? You know, what was your favorite match overall? What was your favorite match in day two as well? Does Roman Reigns deserve to be undisputed champion? I'd like to know what you think of. Remember to smash a like, of course. Remember to subscribe and share. You know, as, as always, if you want to contribute to the channel, you can always contribute via the link description via PayPal. But as always, guys, if you're a Manchester United fan and you're in the States, remember to subscribe as well. As always, as I like to leave it, remember to keep it united if you can, because Man United are not doing that great. And remember to keep Red United. Peace out.